I'm going to rekindle a long forgotten project today and that is the Ranger project here behind me. I've got a series of videos on all these junky Rangers. I'm thinking it's been like two years since I worked on this project and they're sitting out here in the front yard rotting. What I hope to accomplish today is to see if the 1985 cab will fit onto the 2008 uh, Ranger frame. This could end up being a little bit of a chore. I need to clear out all these bush light cans and look, there's waspers and... Oh, shoot, one just got me. And here we go, more fun before we even get started. And yet a little more tragedy. There's a whole herd of the little grubbers right there. I'm gonna see what I can do about exterminating them. <laughs> I just doubt it. Sweet little grubbers. Get off my truck! Get off my truck! Just put a battery in this thing. I'm just curious if it will start and run. It had fuel pump issues last time I ran it, which was probably over a year ago. It was froze up. I banged on it, got it loose. But anyways, let's see what happens. Good to know where we stand. This thing fired right up and sounds good. Gonna take the radiator and condenser out to give me a little room up there. That's some nice clean looking antifreeze. Something has made a home out of my air filter box. Some nasty little critter. This will work out good because it's got that manual fan we took off earlier and an electric fan. The cooler, the better. A view from under the truck, of course I had trouble getting these loose. This one right here just kept spinning, but I got it off and then I had one to break like typically they're supposed to. So it's broke off up here on the top, the bolt head. Other than that, not bad. So I think it's time to try and give it a tug and see what happens. That's when you always find out which wire you didn't unhook or hose or whatever. Your view under the hood before I raise the cab up, I kept everything together as much as I could. See, this is all still put together, the brake stuff, wiring harnesses and fuse box, all kind of chunked together because I want to keep it together as much as possible. Also, one other thing, any bolts that I took out that were holding brackets or whatever, like these, I screwed back in where they were so I'd know which bolts went where when I went to get them. I'm going to keep this cab laying around to those projects over, so that should work out good. I forgot the uh, steering column. Here we go, take two. It's better, but it's still wanting to roll back. I don't know why. If you can't tell, the back wheels are off of the ground. See there? And why? 
Must be on the frame. Oh, yeah. Look there. The lift is right on the frame -o. And take three. So there it is, cabs off. And that's a good feeling just knowing that is over with. All right, now check this out. This is worth this is worth documenting right here. Look at that. Minimum spillage. Look. Time to get this cab out of here. I first got to push this out of the way, get this cab out, get the other cab on, push this back in, set it down, see how it fits. All right, here's a Dodge truck with a car hauling trailer, another project I never finished. As you can see, the trailer's all rusty. Everything's rusty, and I just wanted to show you what the what a tight fit we got going on here. Look at that. That is a tight fit in between the rack here, but it fit good enough. I'm going to figure out a way to put this on concrete blocks or something, lower it down and get it out. So there's the 85 or 86 Ranger body up there on the rack. This is a failed attempt. This is like a 2002 or something S10 Blazer. And I made these mounts right here, perches, or whatever the heck you want to call them, see, for all those where the body mounts would go. And it sat and fit on there real nice. But look at look here, I'm so proud of the front ones. Let me show you this before we carry on. Look at that. See there? And it fit nice, looked good, but what I didn't realize is it was just too far up off of the frame and you could see a whole lot of the frame under there, like a lot of Chevrolet trucks actually, but I don't like that. I don't want to see the frame. So that's why this is a fail and we're going to junk this, we're going to scrap this frame. Our 2008 frame and engine sitting here on the floor now and our 85, 6, something like that, Ranger body. The, what I noticed is the back two mounts are all about the same, the same width. Then you get here in the front and it's wider. On the frame it's wider, on the body it's more narrow, but there's a place, I don't think it's going to be a problem. I may just have to put a hole over here. And the same with the front, it's just got to be moved, moved over. It's a little wider in the front than on this body. But see it's nice and flat through here so I don't think it'll be an issue. I'm gonna lower it down, show you folks how this thing fits on this frame. So check it out. There it is, the 08 frame and engine, the 85 body. Things are gonna work out with this. There are some issues I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna raise it up on the lift and show you the issues but they're minor. So things are going to work out. So take a peek, the back mounts are lining up. That one's tilted up, see, off of it, but it's real close. I'll show you why. Let me show you the other side. Ah, let me show you this other front. See, this one is up too, right there. See, up off of the frame. And I just thought of something, a reason why it might be this way too, by the way. First of all, the reason it's this way right now, this minute, is because this part right here is up against the frame. And there's a gap here, but Got to thinking about it, and my other mounts, see this side is nearly flat and right where it's supposed to be. I mean, I think I've measured wrong. These holes seem to line up and everything. See that one right there is nice. Okay, so the reason I'm saying, here's the deal. I think on my old frame, the old body, the old body style had real tall mounts right here. So I'm going to go out there and get those red mounts that I had on that frame that go to an 85 and see how they fit. See the front, it's not even, you know, lighting's bad, but it's not even touching. I can stick my hand on both sides on the front, see? So let me get those other red mounts and I'm just gonna see how close this is with the red mounts. Anyways, you can see that's a minor deal. I can, I can work with this and the frame if it was lowered down, when I had it lowered, I mean, it's nice. It's tucked up underneath the cab fairly good. The cab's not 
you know, the frame's not sticking out real big and ugly under there. It sticks out just a little bit. So, I like that. I got the red mounts, but they won't work. I was wrong. They're the same size, basically. They just didn't look the same. They're more narrow. So I'm just going to have to study on this a little bit and decide what to do. I want to lower the cab. I don't want to raise these mounts. It'd be easy to raise these mounts and make it work, but that's not what I want to do because I like the frame, as I said before, tucked away. I'll, I'll lower it and show you what I mean with that frame deal, and then we'll look at the engine compartment. See there, you don't see any frame. Check that out. Isn't that nice under that cab? I mean, I'm down on my knees, and if you you know, get down there and tilt under it, you can see it, but just even at this level, you don't see any frame. I like that. I like it a lot. Look under the hood here. Plenty of room in this engine compartment. So, see, I got all this stuff, this ABS. I'll probably hook all this stuff back up and come around here. Look at that. The engine fits nice. It's, you know, it's down in here. The hood will shut, and that's part of the problem I was having. There's there's a lot of room. I don't know which radiator and condenser. We got a long way to go. But it fits in there nice. Things are looking good and going to work out, I think, well with this frame. There's going to have to be other alterations made to the frame, obviously. You guys should know that. See the frame right here in the front is sticking out way too far. I don't need the bumper sticking out, what is that, six inches? in front of the grill and filler panel, so that'll have to be shortened. If you're new to my channel or you're just tuning into this truck build, you need to know that I have a whole series of videos on this truck build, and they're all fails. I'm calling this truck the scavenger because we're scavenging up so many parts from so many different vehicles to make this thing happen. I also have videos on the bodywork that I started to do on it and will continue to do and continue to post. All of these videos I'll put in the link in the description below if you guys want to check them out. But let me run you through the shop here real quick and give you a general idea of what's going on here. What you're looking at here is a 2012, I think, Ford Duratec engine out of a Ford Fusion. The transmission's out of a uh, Mazda Miata, I think a 09. It's got a two-stage clutch in it, and I went through and put some things, uh, friction discs, in the cam gears and stuff like that to get it ready to accept a turbocharger. Original plan was to put this in the original Ford Ranger frame. Didn't work out because of the I-beam suspension. And back here rotting in the corner of my garage is a truck bed that I had been working on also for this buggy. And that's a short wheelbase for this 87 Ranger. This is the turbo charger for it and I can't even remember what the heck. It is a T3 or 4 or something. I don't even, I can't even remember. Here's a manifold that I don't think is going to work out with it. I'm going to try and stay organized on this project. The first thing is to get the frame the right length, get all that in order, get the engine transmission in there. Then what I'm wanting to do is use all of my new stuff out of the truck, the new wiring harness, possibly the air conditioner, heating. I'm wanting to use all that stuff so I can have cruise control, ABS brakes, everything. Swap it over to this older body with the newer frame. Hopefully get it on the road, up and running, rip it around a little bit, you know, and then, like, stage two of the project, start working on the turbo. I'm trying to make clear my intentions with this project because I can use any help I can get from any of you out there if you have any suggestions. I listen and am willing to listen to all the comments you have. I'm not no genius or rocket scientist. I'm just a, a fella trying to have a little fun with an old junk truck. Before I say goodbye, I'm very curious. This is a, I think these are 14 inch wheels on this. Let's see, it says, yeah, 14 inch wheels, these rims. And I'm curious if they will fit onto that, onto this truck. Is the lug pattern the same? And will it clear the front caliper and stuff? And why would I want these wheels? Because, you know, I want it to look like a, just a little old Ranger. And what I had planned to do, if this does fit, and I'm going to try this in a second, we'll see if it does. But what I had planned to do is cut this center out and then put a wider, you know, get a wider rim. They sell like a racing rim for the back, for the back wheels. So it's real wide, you know, and we get some more traction in the back, but yet have the original looking wheels. That's my plan with that. Not everybody's going to like that, but I do.
So there it is, the original wheel back on there, and the lug pattern is the same, but it's not going to work. It's hitting the caliper back there. I need, it looks so much better though on this truck, if you ask me, the original wheels. And if I had the little beauty rings on there, wouldn't that look good? I think, not everybody will. It might be too much trouble, but I'd still like to somehow, you know, cut these up and make it work. I, I like these little wheels where they're slotted like that, but I may not. Be able to go that route, we may have to just get some cool wheels off of something to shove on there, I guess. I don't know. More to think about. If you guys have any ideas, let me know. If you've been a long-time Kentucky Yankee viewer, you probably never thought we'd get back to this project, but we have. This cab's an 87, just to clarify things. I was way off on the year of this thing. It's an 02. See, build date, 1101. So I don't know where the heck I got 08 from. I removed this whole cab and when I got it out here I shook it around a little bit and look more waspers they were all right there in the corner of this thing I'm lucky they didn't eat me up thanks for watching guys it's been a long time coming me getting started back on this scavenger project hopefully you guys can keep me motivated on this project so we can keep going and get it done it needs an engine in it it needs to be turbocharged it needs to be painted it needs an interior and then it needs to rip down the road this is the one and only infamous Kentucky Yankee, without a doubt, signing off.